there and welcome to Red Tent Sisters TV. I'm Kim Sedgwick and I'm Amy Sedgwick and we're the co-founders of Red Tent Sisters. Today we're answering an Ask the Sisters question. Someone asked, how can I manage my PMS? Yeah, and before we answer this question, we kind of want to just address the whole idea of like having to manage it and it being a premenstrual symptoms um, because there are a lot of things that happen premenstrually that are signs that your period is coming, but they're not symptoms in the sense of there being a pathology or something wrong with your body. In fact, they're signs that something is very right. <laughs> so unlike the male reproductive hormones, which are pretty much steady like every day, the female reproductive uh, hormones, they naturally ebb and flow. So mm -hmm. we kind of start off with our period, they're very low, and then estrogen naturally rises as we're approaching ovulation. After we ovulate, the estrogen comes down and progesterone goes way up. Mm -hmm. And then eventually right before our period, they all come down. And so that's all healthy. That's, yeah. you know, if all of those things are happening, ovulation, cervical mucus, estrogen, being high, then being low, those are all really healthy. And so those hormones do various things in our body. Some of them are very obviously directed just to what's happening down here, but there are also things that are happening in other parts of our body. It affects our brain, it affects our libido, it affects our how social we feel. So estrogen tends to make us feel like we want to go out and party and be with our friends. Mm -hmm. And progesterone tends to make us feel like we want to curl up at home or organize our cupboard, <laughs> nest. Like, And that's normal because of what's happening in our cycle yeah. um, relative to the egg and you know, what would be happening if we were actually making a baby. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to kind of reframe the whole thing and not assume that every sign is a symptom. Mm, yes. Yeah, so that's really important. So one of the ways that I like to encourage people to sort of turn the thinking around on this is to think about the moon, right? So the moon goes through all of these different phases. Every single day, it's different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's bright white and illuminates everything. And other times it's totally in darkness. Mm -hmm. And we don't say that like, one thing is more beautiful than the other or that the moon should be exactly the same every single day. We, we appreciate the moon for all of its different stages and even when it's dark and we can't see it and we maybe miss it or think, you know, oh, that's sad that you can't see it. The, the exciting thing is that it comes back. And so I think trying to reframe it and reapproach your body as just being this constant evolution that every day is a little bit different and that that's okay. Mm, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I just want to pick up on the part about libido because that's something I do a lot of work with clients mm -hmm. around with libido is they come to me concerned that they have low libido, which again yeah. is something that's really pathologized in our society. Mm -hmm. um, and often really what it is, is that ebb and flow, right? Yeah. But they're not necessarily, if they're not charting and don't recognize that this is natural and normal for it to shift, then they yeah. worry that this low is never going to come back, right? Yeah. So when you recognize that ebb and flow, then you can again sort of capitalize mm -hmm. on that. And you see that as actually an opportunity for experimentation during the course of your cycle, there's going to be yeah. different time, kinds of connection that you're going to crave from your partner. Yeah. And if you can communicate that so you're both on the same page, then it actually mm. can make your sex life even better. Yeah, totally. And one of the things that I just thought of is you talk a lot about that kind of spontaneous and responsive desire. Yeah. And what I've discovered is like when I'm right in the middle of my cycle ovulatory, I tend to have like really spontaneous desire. Like I'm all about like going after yeah. <laughs> the sex. And then other times of my cycle, you know, I'm, I don't get that spontaneous desire, but it doesn't mean I'm not open to it. It just means it's, it's responsive. Like I need a lot more warm up. I need cues basically mm -hmm. that will help me to get into the mood. So recognizing that there's different, you know, nuances to our desire as well at different times of the cycle is really key. Yeah. So all that knowledge. Yeah, totally. So <laughs> um, one of the other things that I find really important that I like to share with my clients is that in the post ovulatory phase and when we get this rise in progesterone, progesterone actually increases our metabolic rate. And so we need three to 400 more wow. calories per day in that phase of our cycle just yeah. to maintain the same level of activity. Mm -hmm. Now for people who are stressed about gaining weight or they're just like, they're not even knowing that that's a fact that that happens, mm -hmm. they aren't necessarily prepared for it or even willing to support their body in that need. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to prepare for it because the thing that happens is if we're not prepared for it or we're fighting it, is we tend to get so hungry that the only solution mm -hmm. is to reach for something that's an immediate sugar rush. So yeah. potato chips, chocolate bar, whatever's gonna immediately pick you up from mm -hmm. that feeling of kind of starving or craving. And then we get a, a massive dip yep. that happens right after, which is really unpleasant. And then the whole cycle starts again because you get that dip and then you feel like you need more and so you're just oh, up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. And so that's hard on our mood. It's yeah. hard on our energy. And it tends to be difficult uh, from an inflammatory perspective. It actually mm -hmm. exacerbates cramps. 
So we try to be prepared for that, yeah. you know, knowing that that is a natural physiological change that happens, we can prep for it by, you know, for me, I, when I'm entering that phase of my cycle, I get high calorie, high nutrient snacks ready in my fridge that I can literally just grab and, mm. and have ready for me. So that if I get to that point where I'm really hungry, that is not going to take me a long time to prepare my food. It. Yeah. Totally. And I think just talking about the preparation piece is mm -hmm. knowing that for yourself and then also potentially communicating that to the other important people mm -hmm. in your life, whether yeah. you live with you know, a partner, family members, those sorts mm -hmm. of things, just so that they know where you're at. And yeah. we've really started to try and plan things whenever possible. You know, you can't always uh, predict these things or, or yeah. not so much that you can't predict them, but you can't always um, control. control yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and we were lucky we're self-employed yeah. that we have a little bit more control than some people, but just being okay with saying no to certain events if you're really mm -hmm. not feeling it yeah. um, because you're in a stage of, of your cycle where you don't feel really um, like socializing. But the reverse side of that, of that there's times in your cycle where you're gonna be feeling very social. It's a great yeah. time to be doing a presentation or something like that. Or there's yeah. times when you're gonna feel more focused for writing. So again, mm -hmm. just knowing these things and then planning them whenever possible. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I guess lastly, we would just wanna say, like we know that some people do experience really severe PMS or what's called PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So if you are finding it uh, really interfering with your life, like, you can't work, you can't get out of bed, you can't, um, you're, you're having a really negative effect on your relationships or very mm -hmm. strained, you know, please don't be afraid to ask for support, you know, yeah. talk to your doctor about it, talk to a, a naturopathic doctor, you know, seek out our help mm -hmm. and then address a plan, you know, lifestyle and diet accordingly to help you get through that in, a, mm -hmm. in a, whatever way you need to. Um, so that, I think that's really an important thing to remember is that it, it can be very real, it can be very debilitating, but there yeah. is help available. So don't be afraid to ask for it. Yeah, and just to add mm -hmm. that we do have some other YouTube videos and other blog mm -hmm. posts as well if you want to check those out. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a question, you can send it to us, the sisters at redtentsisters.com. You can mm -hmm. also find us on social media or at Red Tent Sisters on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Bye. -bye. Bye.